Before you start, um, make sure that you've got all your materials um, ready. You'll need a dinner plate or a white plate um, that you can mix your colours on. And on the colour wheel, I would suggest that you put your um, red and your yellow and your blue um, in the same positions as you will do on the colour wheel. I think in the sets that you've been given from Kevin, you've actually got um, a lemon yellow, a vermilion and an ultramarine. And I'd use those three colours um, to start your colour wheel. You'll need um, two pots or two jam jars that you can um, use for washing your brushes. You want to keep one of those clean and um, that you can use that for mixing and another one for cleaning your brushes with. You need some paper towels, you need some brushes. Um, watercolour brushes are a bit of a minefield and I'll give you some more information on the handouts. But if you're starting from scratch, I would just make sure that you have a round topped brush that's either a four or a six. Uh, you'll need a pencil and an eraser, a ruler, um, a little side plate that you can draw around to create your colour wheel. And then you'll just need a piece of watercolour paper. I've got just a very um, cheap piece of 90 gram, sorry, 90 pound um, paper um, that is cold press. And um, I think that's perfectly acceptable for this exercise. We're going to start the colour wheel by, um, use your little um, side plate, put it down onto your watercolour paper. Remember we're just using um, a 90 pound or a 200 gram sheet. And I just want you to draw around that with your pencil and create your circle. And then we're going to divide that up into quarters. And um, you can, you know, if you're somebody that isn't particularly neat and um, don't worry about that. Uh, this is just an exercise in uh, working out um, how colours are mixed together, primaries to make secondaries and tertiaries. So um, some people are very, um, very relaxed about it and some people like to be incredibly neat. So choose your own special way. It's the most important aspect is that you enjoy it and you are aware of the colours that are mixed. So now we've got four four areas and I'd like you just to divide those up into three, approximately sort of three wedges. So some people will do this exactly and know all their measurements for diameters. I'm not a great mathematician. So I'm just going to divide that up um, and that's going to give you the areas roughly that you want to use for the colour wheel. So is that just about it there? Okay. All right, so we've got our colour wheel to start with and we're going to um, fill in first of all the primaries. Now, Primaries, as you probably know, are the, the colours um, red, blue and yellow, and those cannot be mixed. Um, they're kind of standalone colours. And I suggested to keep your, pa your plate that you're working with in the same kind of format. So you've got your red at the top, your blue off to the left and your yellow to the right. So we want what you want to do, first of all, is to um, mix those up into these areas here. So keep one of your pots of water um, for cleaning your brush with and the other for the help with mixing the colours. So we're going to just fill in the red. Um, Watercolour can be um, temperamental and it can also be really, as I've said before, quite a difficult medium. I think it's actually one of the most difficult mediums. And uh, we just need to just be, uh, have fun with it. So, it's our red. Some people do this by um, putting down uh, the water, um, do it on wet on wet, rather wet than wet on dry, which I've done here. And um, so I'm just going to show you with the with the with the yellow. Um, so 
wet on wet is, would be that I would wet that area where the yellow is going um, with the water and use your clear water, your clean water for this. I popped my brush in the wrong one. Um, get your yellow primary mixed up and then you can start filling it in and you can see that it just glides it will glide onto the paper really kind of quite nicely up to that edge where you've um, placed your your water so it's up to you um, how you want to fill this in if you want to do dry you know, wet on dry, as I've done with the red, or wet on wet, as we've done with the yellow. Okay. Right, so, we've got our yellow. And now we're going to just, to, to fill in with the blue. And, um, a lot of these uh, watercolours in the tubes in particular in particular have um, gum, gum arabic, quite a lot of gum arabic in them, um, which is used as the binder and also in the, you'll see it in the pans as well. And sometimes that uh, can interfere if there's, if there's quite a lot, if the colours aren't, um, you know, depending on how much some of them cost, they can kind of make a difference. I'm not frightfully keen on my um, ultramarine blue here that I've got, but it is a Cotman's, which is a student colour. Um, you can do a bit of investigation on your um, brands and um, make your own decisions as to what you like to use. Okay, so that's our, our blue. Just remember that this is this is an exercise, and um, you know, have fun with it. Most of all, it's the kind of experimentation of colour mixing. Okay, so we have our primaries here, and we're now going to go on, and we are going to go mix in our secondary colours. So if you mix the red and the yellow, you're going to get orange. Those, that's going to be your secondary colour. So kind of treat your, you know, colour mixing on your plate here as though, you know, that you almost that you've got your little colour wheel here. Um, so where you're mixing is going to kind of reflect where you are onto the paint, uh, onto the paper. Sorry. So this is our orange, and um, I'm going to just fill that one in here. I didn't want to take um, too much time up really going through this because I think it's kind of quite, um, it's quite self-explanatory really. Um, but I just want you to just to be aware of, um, you know, where things are going to be placed and um, what, what the colour wheel is going to end up looking like. Okay, so you would, um, finish colouring that in. You're going to mix the yellow and the blue and that's going to become your green and uh, let's just have a look at that and you know, that's going to be filled in here. I'm just going to just give you that indication of that colour there. Now the purple is often um, a colour which I think you know can be kind of quite temperamental on a colour wheel. So you often, m many of us will make decisions that we'll buy the purple because um, we find that, um, you know, the, the reds that we've got and the blues that we've got are not always going to make the purple that we really would like. So this um, mixture will always come out um, erring, I think, um, uh, on, a, on a kind of brownie, purple rather than um, the color that that we that we really would what, what that we really know as purple or as it as as violet 
Um, so, you know, just be aware of that when you're mixing. Um, it's, it, it's just something that you need to be aware of because the red is a warm colour. You've got the, you've got the blue. If you had an alizarin crimson um, as your red there and you mixed with the purple you, to make a purple with that blue, it would, it would obviously be very, very different. So we've got our purple, we've got our green and we've got our orange. So those are our, our secondary colours on our wheel. Okay, and then what we're going to do is, um, some people call them intermediates or um, other people call them tertiary colours. So what you've got here is that you've got your red, you've got your um, your orange and then you've got, um, you've got a, an orange yellow and then you've got, um, you've, yeah, sorry, you've got your, your orange yellow and then you've got your red orange and those are your your tertiaries or your intermediates and the same thing happening around here so we'd have our green um, then we'll have a blue green then we'll have a blue then we'll have a blue purple and then we'll have a purple and then we'll have a purple red so basically what you're doing to 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 create and to complete the color wheel is that you're mixing um, you're mixing the two outside colors to make the inside colors outside colors to make the inside outside to make the inside outside oh, no because that's the red sorry okay once we've finished the color wheel we're going to do a series of exercises on the numerous sheets of paper this is just an overview here of some of the things that we'll be exploring so we're going to be mixing those the the reds the yellows and blues um, in various configurations on a set of sheets i'm going to show you in a minute we're also going to look at the way um, that watercolour will react on surfaces which have been wettened um, beforehand um, called wet on wet and where we get these beautiful blooms happening. We're going to look at laying down washes, um, how, how watercolour plays onto a surface that might be wet or dry or you're just um, you know, layering paint. Um, a last little exercise which is called the horse's blanket um, is where we are just um, painting a series of of stripes of mixed colours um, that um, sit on a very kind of pale ochre background. These um, these sheets should just be quite experimental. They should really be playful. And if you're a beginner, just take things slowly and enjoy um, each stage of discovery. Um, and if you're more advanced, um, try out something new with it and start to kind of really look at um, the way that um, watercolour lies down onto the surfaces and how we can kind of enjoy that layering here, um, how um, these wet areas, wet on wet, work here and we get this creation of um, a third colour here. So all the colours on this sheet are all created by the, the, the red, the yellow and the blue, the primaries that we have here. And I'm, I'm a very methodical and um, quite probably quite anal in the way that I put these sheets together. I see them a little bit as, en as end papers, but I, I think they, they have a beauty of their own. So, um, you know, play around, um, in, in, create your own kind of dynamic in the way that you want to put these um, sheets together. If you um, are worried about wasting paper or anything like that, just try it out. You've got sketchbooks and the paper in there is more than adequate um, to take the, take the watercolour and um, just just experiment um, and, and just uh, have some fun. So those are three very different sheets that are exploring that relationship between um, those primary colours. So have some fun with it, um, most of all, and, um, and, and see what you create. <laughs>